This is a video for the chemical changes topic, which is AQA GCSE Chemistry Unit 4. This comes up in paper one of both GCSE Chemistry and Combined Science. In this video, we're going to look at the reaction of metals with oxygen. There's an accompanying worksheet if you look in the description below. By the end of this video, you should understand how reactions can be used to put metals in order of reactivity. Recall a general word equation for the reaction of metals with oxygen complete specific word equations for the reactions of certain metals with oxygen, and construct some symbol equations for the reactions of both group 1 and group 2 metals with oxygen. Often when people struggle with chemistry, it's because they don't realise that actually it's very systematic and it follows patterns. So you don't need to know every reaction by heart, just the patterns. The periodic table is a helpful diagram that groups elements together based on their chemical properties. So elements that sit together in a group react in the same way. When we talk about reactivity, we mean how chemically reactive an element is. How big will the reaction be? The reactivity series is a list of the metals in order of their reactivity. And we can construct a short version of this list ourselves by looking at certain reactions. And then based on this, we can make predictions about other reactions that might or might not happen. When metals react with oxygen, they undergo a reaction called oxidation. And they make a product called a metal oxide. We can loosely divide our metals into three groups based on how easily they make these metal oxides. Potassium, sodium and lithium are highly reactive group 1 metals. Here you can see two pictures of lithium from my group 1 video. In the left picture, I had just scratched the surface to expose the shiny lithium metal. And five minutes later in the right hand picture, a new layer of oxide has formed. This has happened fast enough for me to watch it without me even needing to apply any heat. Then we have metals like iron and zinc, which do form metal oxides, but not fast enough for you to watch it happening unless you heat them. And finally, we have our very unreactive metals, what I like to call jewellery metals. They're good for making jewellery out of because they're unreactive, and therefore they don't quickly tarnish. Metals like gold and platinum barely form compounds at all, and they can exist in their elemental form for a very long time without reacting. Some metals, like potassium, sodium and lithium are so reactive that they'll react with oxygen just by being exposed to the air. Other metals need to be heated in order to react. Here I've got two of those metals, some magnesium and some copper. I'm going to fold the copper so that the oxygen can't get into the very centre of it. My piece of magnesium is a bit too small to do that with though. So using the roaring flame of a Bunsen burner, I'm going to heat my copper, which starts out copper coloured. And the reaction is really very slow. Slowly, you can start to see it change in colour as it reacts with the oxygen. As metals react with oxygen, they form a compound called a metal oxide. You can start to see that my copper is changing colour. and over time, it gets darker and darker. Even using the Bunsen burner, which is really hot, this is a very slow reaction. But now, after quite a long time, you can see that my copper has basically turned black. It's covered in copper oxide. I'm gonna leave that to cool for a minute. Now, magnesium is much more reactive than copper. And I can tell because almost as soon as I put it into the Bunsen burner flame, it starts reacting. And as it does so, it transfers energy in the form of radiation, light. And again, I've made a metal oxide, this time magnesium oxide, which is white. I'm going to leave my copper to cool down for a little bit and then we'll come back and have another look. This revision video is the fourth in a series about the A-level chemistry topic of acids and bases. In this video, we define a weak acid and base and examine how to use the equilibrium constant Ka to calculate either the pH of the acid if we know its concentration or its concentration if we know its pH. We don't go into buffers and reactions of weak acids in this video because that will get a separate video of its own. Now that it's had a chance to cool, if I open up my copper, you can see that it's still black on the outside where the copper oxide has been made. But if I open it up, then in the very centre, 
where no oxygen could get to react. It's still shiny and copper coloured. If you've downloaded the worksheet from the description below, then you should now be able to fill in all of task one. For GCSE chemistry, you need to be able to write word and symbol equations for all of the reactions that are named in the specification. Let's look at the reactions of metals with oxygen. As we said earlier, this reaction makes a metal oxide. So for any named metal, the product will be that metal with oxide tagged on the end. So iron reacts with oxygen to make iron oxide. Pause the video and jot down the products that are made in these five reactions. So titanium reacts with oxygen to make titanium oxide, calcium reacts with oxygen to make calcium oxide, chromium reacts with oxygen to make chromium oxide, copper reacts with oxygen to make copper oxide, and sodium reacts with oxygen to make sodium oxide. As you can see, there's a pattern to this, and once you know what the pattern is, they can give you the name of literally any metal, and you would know what the product being made was. If you've downloaded the worksheet, there are now five more examples for you to have a go at. Lots of people find symbol equations more intimidating than word equations, but I actually think that symbol equations are much better at helping you to understand chemistry because often the name of a compound doesn't actually tell you what atoms are in it, whereas the symbol chemical formula means that you know exactly what atoms you're dealing with. In order to write symbol equations for the oxidation of metals, we need to know a little bit about oxygen. Oxygen mainly exists in the world as divalent or diatomic molecules. These are molecules that contain two atoms, and they're represented in a symbol equation by O2. The little two tells you that there are two oxygen atoms. One oxygen atom is able to form bonds with two atoms that come from group one, or one atom that comes from group two. Let's look at group two first. Remember, elements that you find in the same group are going to undergo chemical reactions in the same way. So once we know how one group two metal reacts with oxygen, we know how all of them react with oxygen. Firstly, we need to think about what we should put into our symbol equation for oxygen. Oxygen is always going to be in the form of O2. Now let's think about the compound that gets made. We know that beryllium will react with oxygen to make beryllium oxide. And we've said that elements from group two react with oxygen in a one-to-one -one ratio. So therefore, my formula for beryllium oxide must be BeO. Now I've got a problem. On the left side of my equation, I've got two oxygen atoms, but on the right side, I've only got one. I can't change the formula of beryllium oxide. All I can do is have more than one beryllium oxide. So in order for there to be two oxygen atoms on the right of my equation, I put a big two, a coefficient, in front of it. Now I fix the problem of having two oxygens, but I've now got two beryllium's on the right and I need them on the left as well, or my symbol equation wouldn't be balanced. So I finish off by adding a two at the front. Now that you have this pattern, we can do exactly the same thing for the other group two elements. Pause the video and write down a symbol equation for each of these reactions. By following the same process, you should have come up with the following equations. You can see that each one takes exactly the same form as the beryllium one. Hopefully that was a useful summary of the reactions of metals with oxygen. 
Thank you very much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more chemistry videos coming soon.